Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Mayor Tyler Moore Show here on the Kokomo Post. I'm your host, Drew Larison. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Mayor. How are you doing today so far? I'm great. I'm Good great. Another amazing Bobcat basketball game yesterday. Yeah. The excitement was there. Uh, kudos to Brett Earlywine for lining up about six industrial, I mean, larger than industrial size fans to get the air yeah. moving in there. So it was a lot more enjoyable of a atmosphere <laughs> temperature wise it was hot. sunday versus friday i heard friday so was it was a little nuts. steamy um brie was telling me it's uh very hot especially for a pregnant woman <laughs> as she is uh with child with the moment uh yeah so i heard it's hot is there no air conditioning in memorial gym um there might be if and when they need it it may Would just cost us friday? a little more if we ran it okay so gotcha yeah, so that that might be needed uh, as summer goes along. I mean, I but we know. figured if the if the gr- high school graduates and their families had to endure because they never run the air conditioning during yeah. graduation it's commencement, a part of it. so it's your final test. It's your final test as a yeah. graduate of Kokomo High School. Can you be in Memorial Gym during graduation and not pass out? Uh, so and, that's and good. Are you a true Bobcat fan? Can you endure the heat? In order to still come support great the Bobcats, question. and there were plenty of people. Honest, we had tickets to both games this weekend, but a pool sounded so Ooh, much better. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we were in the pool quite a bit this weekend, as you can tell by my uh, bronze beauty of a face. Working on that tan. Uh, in a few weeks, I actually will be going to Florida for vacation. Bree is going to take my spot on the show. Mm-hmm. So, that's, so you'll hang out with Bree for a week. Perfect. She's very excited to not talk about anything important. Uh, well, good for you for working things. on your tan base then before yeah, you, get, you don't want exactly. to go down there and burn that's so the good. goal i'm working working on the golden brown cookie uh skin before i go down to florida so that's good you had a good weekend i didn't really do much of anything but as always let's talk about what's going on at city hall this week anything fun uh nothing fun a lot of planning we're starting to, to uh, meet with department heads and uh even council members doing the same to uh, start getting thoughts together for budgets it's hard to believe uh, not only summer is here, but budget time is here. So okay. a lot of discussions with that going on. Um, gearing up for uh, a handful of uh, continued celebrations. I know Juneteenth is coming yep. up this Saturday. And yep. so there's uh, two different um, events there that, uh, I mean, the, the city's uh, partnering with uh, the Ho- Kokomo Housing Authority and Carver Center at the one over at uh, uh, Gateway Garden. It's next to Gateway Gardens, but in the Inventrek parking lot. So I okay. uh, work with them there. And I believe uh, uh, Second Missionary Baptist Church and Wayman Chapel are also doing something up uh, in their neck of the woods, and possibly at Studebaker Park as well. So a lot going on this weekend. The Kokomo Symphony is going to be down yeah. in, the, in the park uh, doing a be- benefit concert, free concert for everybody to say, hey, thanks for enduring the pandemic with us. So they'll be doing that Saturday. Saturday night, so another fun-filled weekend that if you're not doing anything or can't find something to do, you're not looking hard enough. It's true. Yeah, and I think the Jackrabbits are even home Friday night. I think they are, yeah. So. They're in their home quite a bit. I think they're not here for the 4th, but they're here for the first few yep. days um, before the 4th. I'm about to sneeze. We'll continue All on. right. Yeah. <laughs> so Jackrabbits nice are dramatic back. dramatic pause. <laughs> yeah. Wait for uh, the, it. The allergies have been killing me lately. Oh, I and bet. I feel like um, there's been most of my life has been waiting on a sneeze to come, but it never actually does. <laughs> and that is worse than I wish I would just actually sneeze and have that <laughs> moan of relief. But this isn't a show about Drew's allergies, so we'll continue on. Uh, so the Bobcats were home this weekend. And Bree told me this morning uh, you had a special role at the Bobcats game. Unbeknownst this to me. Weekend. So, yeah, so obviously one of the sponsors that does the uh, the shots where you do the layup, the free throw, and the three-pointer, and you can win yeah. a gift card and such. Well, usually they um, the – they pick the one of the, they, they pick like they pick, yeah. pick the uh, participant you know prior to the game start because it comes with their ticket. Well, apparently that individual didn't show up, and I made the mistake of standing up between the first <laughs> and second quarter talking to somebody, and Bree was looking for uh, a willing participant, I guess, and and, and she called, just found called a me out over the PA and said, "Let's bring the mayor up to shoot." And uh, luckily, I made the layup, but yeah. I tanked on the two free throws i've done i've done that same game and i did the same thing made the layup no problem really great at layups uh the free throw i yeah both of mine went in and out and it was kind of disappointing and i looked over and the bobcats bench were just shaking they're really disappointed in me but that's fine i mean it's a good time the bobcats games the gym i heard was extremely warm on friday because outside the world was Mm -hmm. insanely hot 
Um, but the gym was really hot. But, I mean, they lost Friday night in a tough game, but they won on Sunday. One so big was great on Sunday. Yep. Yeah. Um, so another thing we want to do on the show this week, and this is going to be a first. This is uh, – I'm just going to make this up. It's called uh, Foods with the Mayor. You know, that's a really <laughs> great segment name. Is everybody Maybe. laughing and they're really they really like that. Maybe we'll change it for next camera. week. <laughs> no, I think that's it. I think it, there's no need to change it. It's good. Mayor Munchies. <laughs> well, all right, there it is. Munchies with the mayor. Munchies with the mayor. There we go. Uh, this one actually <laughs> no, might fit that, into that, that category really either. well. Uh, okay. This might be a, a munchy type of food. So there's this internet challenge going on um, uh. where I think it started on TikTok, like most good things in the world do these days. Where you take a slice of watermelon, which, by the way, who doesn't love watermelon? One of the greatest things to eat in the uh, summer. Do you like watermelon? I I had a really bad experience as a child with you watermelon. Have watermelon trauma at at a family reunion. Yeah, so this will be interesting. Do you want to tell? us? Is it, well, too, it just, is it still at, scars at the, you deep? At the time, I loved watermelon, and I and I sat and probably ate a whole watermelon myself, and I was probably you seven or eight, okay. and it all came back up. And Love so, that. yeah, so there's that. So this is going to be awesome. Um, and by okay. awesome, I mean maybe See, horrible. I'm already starting to sweat. <laughs> okay. So there's this internet challenge, Michael, if you want to bring it in, that for some reason, this combination of foods, um, the internet says is really good together um and it's watermelon as you can see as yellow mustard so this is what we're going to try today man i swear we did not know about (sighs) your um watermelon trauma before we planned this segment um but basically you just take this we have just classic french's yellow mustard and i hope there's no cap on this this is a brand new bottle and this segment is not sponsored by french's mustard no just to make that clear they did not contact us all right, so this is uh, something we'll learn as we do more food segments. There's definitely a security a safety cap, seal. A safety See, seal. somebody was looking out for me. Yeah, exactly. We're not trying to poison the mayor here or anything like that today. All right, so we'll put uh, that to the side. Yep, that's mustard. Uh, no games. And from what I've seen on the internet, you really put mustard on it. Like okay, you, you layer well, it on. This is a seedless watermelon, so we're gonna have no concerns about choking today. As you can see, I definitely have water or uh, mustard on the watermelon. And, yeah, so but the Internet is saying it's one of those combinations of food that you uh, doesn't sound good at all, um, but for some reason it works. So we're, <laughs> we're going to give it a try. This is the Mayor Tyler Moore Show. Uh, the segment is called Munchies with the Mayor, I think is what we determined see me it to be called. Okay. And uh, cheers, Mr. Mayor. Cheers. Cheers. You know, <laughs> producers should have checked to learn your trauma with watermelon before this show. Um, the mustard actually helps. Does it really? It takes, yeah. It kind of takes the... Uh, <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> His eyes are watering. You can't see that. You good? I'm good. All right. Um, I like to say... Oh, God. I like to say that the internet is undefeated at times. Like, for some reason, the internet does a lot of really great things. Did it just get warm in here? (laughs) This isn't one, in my opinion. This is not one of the things uh, the internet has done well. You don't have to keep eating this. (laughs) I don't know. Believe it or not. You like it? the, The mustard does help. Help what? I don't know. It, it helps me get through the watermelon. For someone who has watermelon trauma. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Maybe we solved. It's, this is like a, a counseling too, session too for your trauma that you have. Because I love mustard. Yeah. And yeah. so I guess, it, I mean, they. I mean, you can have mine if you counter want. Counter each yeah. other out. No, I mean, so it's a no-go for me. Uh, this is a. This is a no. I don't want to eat that ever again. I mean, I would. I go like to mustard a- on its own. I like watermelon on its own. Not a fan. I mean. Even though I'm, I'm making it through. Uh-huh. I don't know that I would go to a summer picnic and go, "Oh, watermelon." Okay, yeah, I'll I think go ahead you and... should, but secretly record the reactions. Oh man, look at yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Watermelon. It could shirt. be mustard though. It could be worse. It's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you would do it? I would do it. You, you know, actually, we talked a while back. Yep. You were on one of our other podcasts that we have. Um, 
Actually, it was during when you were running for that mayor. That actually wasn't bad. That, yeah, when the when the mustard, because, the, yeah, the initial, and maybe it's a texture thing, too, because the watermelon, it's like, oh, but then the, the mustard worked its way through and kind of in. You were like on a the, Food Network the show watermelon. describing this right now. The mouthfeel, you know, the, like the, the watermelon. Oh. You were on another podcast okay. of ours when you were running for mayor. And you talk to us about your favorite sandwich. What is your favorite? You maybe have oh, a history of weird yeah, food if, combinations. I do. And and the thing, and if I, I could be having the worst day in the world and think, you know what? It's time for a bologna, mayonnaise, jelly, and cheese sandwich. There it is. Bologna, bologna mayonnaise, mayonnaise jelly, grape jelly. Grape jelly. And, and cheese. American cheese. That so just turns you, my day around. Yeah. Can you, do you want more? No, I'll okay. we'll wait till later. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll wait till later. Yes, maybe you just have a thing for uh, weird food combinations. It could be. I mean, I'm, the Coterie, actually, they have a um, a burger they make, and it's grape jelly and mayo. Okay. It's like they mix those two together, and it's like a jelly mayo, and it's... Yeah, okay, All so right. uh, you get a thumbs up so from good. Mayor Moore. Uh, Mustard and watermelon. My wife will be surprised because she makes fun of me because of my your watermelon, watermelon phobia. I, I know, and I'm still sweating, but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Love the sea. It was okay, good. Awesome. Well, maybe we'll do a Munchies with the Mayor another time. Uh, we'll do more segments. Maybe if you have a restaurant, local restaurant, and you want to you know, supply some food for the show, maybe we'll try some stuff on camera in Perfect. the future. That could be fun to show off our great local eateries um, that we have here in Kokomo. All right, so the next up I want to talk about, and this week um, for the Ask the Mayor, which usually for the Ask the Mayor segment, honestly, like, we haven't got a ton of questions from people, which either means um, they have no questions, they're completely complicit with how this uh, the city is being ran, or they don't have any questions, or they just didn't see our post asking for questions. Not the same this week. Not this week. Uh, yeah. You guys blew up our Facebook posts, our Instagram posts, our DMs. Um, you guys blew those up with a lot of questions, and we all all those questions we picked them out um, today. The ones that really make sense right now. Some of them make sense for later things going on in the year, but we didn't. I mean, there were tons of questions, and if we yes, thank did you all. all of those questions, we'd be here. This would be an, a two hour long show. We so, need few more pieces of watermelon we yeah we'd have to have the whole watermelon i think um to get through that um so we're going to do a bunch of questions with the ask the mayor segment um the first one which is really interesting can we have please have more electric car charging stations downtown in the parking garage which that's funny because i was when the actually does the new parking garage have charging yes, stations it's got, as well? i think it's got a couple in it as okay. well there's there aren't very many because i know there's a couple in the there's only two of them first i think garage in the, too, the first yeah. garage and I've, I've been trying to talk my wife in i'm a big fan of the brand tesla mm -hmm. and like tesla cars um and everything like that and i've said for us who live work and play pretty much downtown kokomo uh it's the perfect world for us to have an electric car because we would park it in the garage, charge it all day. Yep. I wouldn't because they're free, by the way. Yeah, they're free mm -hmm. chargers, so we would literally never have to pay to fuel yep. our car. But anyway, that was from um, Brianna on our Instagram page. Okay. So yeah, so as we continue to do development, because I know we're still working on the hotel and conference center. So I mean, as we look at development, I mean that's good to know that there is a need uh, in the two garages. Uh, so definitely something to look into. I know the the mall and even I believe either Meyer or Walmart, uh, one of the, those two organizations are are looking at potentially putting some uh, in okay. their parking lots as well. And so there's talk about more coming. But as for downtown, we'll continue to uh, look at possibilities or uh, advantages to that. So I think one of them was broken at some point too. Oh. Is that the, does the city own those and fix those, or is that an outside company? That would be. It's, pro it's probably an outside company that we contract. Yeah, okay. I mean, they're the, the city's the responsibility. City's responsibility. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Um, so we'll look into yeah, it. Thanks, yeah, Brianna. You got to think, too. I feel like every week a new car company is announcing a new electric That they're vehicle. going electric, right. Um, so maybe even some spots. Because I know the ones in the garage right now, they're designated just for electric vehicles. So maybe some other chargers spread out that mm -hmm. you don't have to have electric vehicles, you know, or something like that. Um, but I mean, Ford just came out with the F1, the all electric F-150, yeah. um, which that's going to change, I think, the truck game in a huge way. Um, so the more and more electric vehicles happening in our world, some more chargers yep. would be great. All right. The next question is from Judy on Facebook. She says, does the city enforce the noise ordinance i have a neighbor who keeps his or her car radio up so loud it rattles the windows in my house yeah and we get many calls with car stereos and unfortunately the noise ordinance 
spe- uh, specifies a particular decibel level that if it exceeds, it would become a nuisance. Are cops and running so, around with... And they're not, no. I mean, so... You know. And a lot of times, too, when it's the... I mean, if it's the neighbors and they're parked and they can come out and, and know that uh, it's that particular individual that's that's making the, the racket, uh, then they can address it. But a lot of the phone calls we get, you know, we get these cars that drive up and down the streets, like... Ma'am, I'm sorry that you know. Yeah. It, it, by the time we got out there, obviously they'd be They're gone, gone yeah. and you know, and 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 we're still working on manpower to have direct patrols to where they would potentially be sitting and um and uh, and patrolling the the traffic in areas as opposed to canvassing the the community. So, kind of a two edged sword there that we're as soon as we get resources and are able to address those. Um, might have a better opportunity to do that. I know there's concerns too with the uh, recent uh, fireworks amendment or the amendment sure. to the yeah. or- noise, noise was ordinance. A big part of that. Yeah, um, it wasn't a whole new fireworks ordinance. It was just an amendment to the noise ordinance addressing consumer fireworks. And so a lot of people say, "Oh, we can't fire anything." No, you can still do the small fountains, um, yeah. spinners. You know, things that stay on you know on the ground or don't go too high uh, off the ground and don't cause a whole lot of noise. It's the big consumer ones. Yeah. The, you know the the mortar type that uh, um, that uh, the colorful bombs addressed. is pretty so. much what those are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So when somebody does have, I don't know if Judy has done this. I don't think she mentioned that on her post. But I mean, is that a non-emergency call? It's a non-emergency. You know, how are they call? supposed to be calling? Yeah. So it's a non-emergency call. call if it continues. And, you know, and when they call dispatch, you know, they will uh, would would indicate that as well that it's it's a non-emergency call. Uh, we'll try and get an officer to, there to to address if it is. But I mean, they they typically ask a lot of questions prior to that. But uh, yeah, depending on the uh, intensity or consistency of it, yeah, if okay. they've got time, we'll get good. over. Uh, Judy, hopefully that answered your question. Good luck with that, neighbor. Um, next question comes from Christy on Facebook. What more can be done about the violence pervading in Kokomo? There is a shooting weekly, if not nightly. Um, like I said, from Christy from Facebook. So I know we've talked a lot about in your state of the city, you talked a lot about increasing law safety. enforcement mm-hmm. and safety was definitely one of the three uh, main pillars of your speech. But I mean, uh, what numbers are we seeing with these changes, which I guess I know they're new, um, but you know, numbers of violent crimes, number of violent reports that are coming in, are we seeing any changes so far? Haven't looked at numbers of, of actual cases. I know it, it seems like it may be nightly. Luckily, it's, it's not. Uh, it does, you know, may appear to be more frequently, but because we've got more bodies, I mean, we're, I think, net five now. So even, even though we were, um, we've hired 21, 22 uh, officers since January of last year, we've lost about uh, 22 new hires, 17 or 18. Yeah, but we've lost oh. 18 to right to retirement, retirement. injuries and such. Um, so wow. uh, now that we're getting a little more uh, active on patrolling and addressing those, it seems like violence is increasing. But in actuality, and again, we can you know still gather that information. It's because we're addressing it more aggressively and uh, more efficiently. So, what has been going on is now being addressed. But uh, all I can do is, is uh, ask for everybody's patience. You know, one report, if anything, uh, looks suspicious, or um, you know, to help the KPD more direct patrol. But uh, outside of that, patience as we continue to add numbers, which we're continuing to do. Uh, to get uh, more boots on the street to address that. Have we, is there anywhere public um, someone could go to, I know you said you haven't looked at numbers, but anywhere public someone could go to do some comparison of like certain crimes that have been reported this year, you know, the last six months compared to in 2020, which crime was down a lot, I feel like in 2020, right. because there were so many less people. And I know, out doing yeah, I know the FBI does uh, reports, but I don't know what the access How public it is. Yeah, and, and that's a good question because I don't know that we put out monthly or quarterly semi annual stats of, of cases, but that might be a I good will look thing. into it. It'd be a good thing, yeah, to yeah, let I mean, everybody know where we are. Yeah, because that is, I mean, it's one of the main things you ran on was trying mm-hmm. to fix those problems. And some, and I understand 2020 was a 
different year in every right. way possible. But yeah, there was a lot less crime in 2021 because everybody was quarantined. But you're right. I mean, we need to have those metrics available so everybody sees how we're doing. Well, yeah, it's, so, you know, it's just a, a yep. case study of um, here are the changes we're making and here's the results of those changes. Um, for, I mean, for your guys' yep. and just for the right. public to know. Yeah, so we'll keep on it. Okay, appreciate that uh, question, Christy. Sue, this one's a very personal one. This was Sue on cool. Facebook. Uh, and by personal, I mean it involves her recycling. She lives oh. on North Street, and they have not taken her recycling in over a month, she said. Okay. Now, uh, Sue, I will say um, I'm a victim of are my recycling not being taken sometimes, and 100% of those times it's been my fault because those recycling people, they come early. Mm-hmm. They and come I tell you what, if the, if the tote isn't on the street the night before, there's a chance yeah. you're missing them. So maybe if that's... What you're doing yep. as well, maybe you're missing them, but if not, and, maybe this right. is something that's being missed. And if the trash isn't being missed, then it's not that it's on the wrong side of the street sure. or alley or whatever. Sometimes as well, if um, there are things protruding through or protruding out of the recycling bin that isn't necessarily recyclable, like uh, folks aren't supposed to put branches and limbs and such inside your recycling sure. tote. So if it's in there, uh, those guys are instructed to go ahead and... Um, bypass those uh, because then that commingles things with uh, with the recycling and, yeah. and compromises the load um, outside of that uh, without going by and, and and actually seeing you know what the reason may be um, and I, I can't answer that without well, it's one of those up. things too where who is she, who should she call for that maybe she has like I said well, this is just a Facebook comment we don't have all the details yeah, the, and, and she may have, if she calls the refuse and maintenance department and gives her address and indicates that, a lot of times they'll send a supervisor out to see why, in fact, that uh, particular tote may have been overlooked. Um, feel free to call my office, 456-7444, and, uh, and we can get in touch with um, the refuse and maintenance department as well. But uh, definitely, if you follow up or whatever, send us that address so we can check it out. Sounds good. Like I said, Sue, uh, Maybe you were doing what I was doing, and maybe it wasn't getting out the night before, and they're there early. I will stay still having a website reminding people of when the recycling week is. That mm. still needs to happen. I think it's yeah, a great I idea. That up. Yep. Um, next question is from Lynn on Facebook. Can minor rookie and t-ball teams be moved back to city parks? Championship Park is not suited for them. Leave it for the bigger kids. This year has been a mess for these kids. Mm. Um, Like I said, from Lynn on Facebook. So this one was interesting. I don't have kids playing in baseball leagues, probably failing as a parent in that way. They probably should be in some way, but I'm not. Um, But let's talk about, like, the roles here. How much of this is, like, the league? I mean, is the city dictating who plays where? How does that work? Obviously, we constructed a championship park, and the leagues represented by each of their respective presidents. So for the past... Really, I think two or three years since Championship Park has uh, been in the planning stages, planning and design. Um, the presidents from UCT, South Side, North Side, uh, East Side, uh, the Girls Softball League, Babe Ruth, um, have all been meeting to form this Cubs, so the Kokomo United Baseball and Softball League. And it was their desire and, and their decision to combine the leagues and, and play out at the state of the art. Uh, facility for these kids now i've heard mixed emotions i've heard some uh, similar to uh, her comments that oh it's just too crazy and you know and even though it's on turf and it's cool you know having a couple games going on at the same time is is a little uh, too much uh, for these younger kids um but um also conversely had others say oh this is the greatest thing and it's such a wonderful opportunity for these kids and it's going great um some are dealing with the parking some aren't dealing with the parking well and such so the decision to move the t-ball and even rookie leagues back to the individual parks would fall on the cubs organization so this new group assuming group that you know so the the city because the city's now maintaining each of those parks and we still have the diamonds available and and they're um also available for these teams to practice when they can't get on the the uh, championship park fields during the week um, on non-game nights so they still have access to that so if that's a a desire of the um cubs league to do uh, that would be up to them, but the I mean the city's going to support whatever needs to whatever they decide to do 
uh, as that league. But the, um, I mean, we can only direct and, and suggest and continue to uh, gotcha. make those available. Yeah, that's what I was assuming, that it was more up to the league. And I think this year, especially being the first year at Championship Park, a lot of these leagues are thinking, Checking. let's try to play let's there how, as much as possible how it works to, out. Yep. to figure it out, to be able to see it. I still haven't been out there in person. Um, you mean, but I know there was a lot of hype. There was a lot yeah. of excitement. So. so check with your coach. See if it's something that, that, that not only the parents, but the coach, maybe more coaches feel the same way too, and it'd be something that they as a group go as to the, the Cubs organization yeah. and just see how logistically it could be done. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And this next question – you kind of talked about it in the opening, but uh, it'd be good to bring up okay. even. Um, why isn't the city of Kokomo sponsoring a Juneteenth celebration? I think that's definitely something that is worth having a big celebration downtown. I know K-A-H, K-H-A mm-hmm. and the Carver Center is having one, but I didn't see anything about the city of Kokomo supporting it. It's not even being held downtown like all the other festivals and other things. I am wondering why. And that is from Melissa on Facebook. So like I yes. said, you kind of brought so, this up. Yeah, so last yeah. year, again, under uh, the pandemic, uh, the Kokomo Housing Authority and Carver Center uh, partnered up and wanted to do something to acknowledge that they had something there on the Gateway Gardens uh, site. Uh, there was also a couple uh, individuals that, that uh, uh, went together and tried to have something down at Foster Park. Um, I approached housing housing authority, you know, Derek Steele and and Dante Rogers with the Carver Center, and said, "What do you guys want to do?" You came together and and and, and brought a lot of vendors because there, I mean, there were there were others there. Um, you know, I think Project Access was there, the library, the I mean, so they they turned it almost into a a trade show or a trade fair as well, and so. Um, I offered them the the city support, whether it was going to be down at uh, at Foster Park. Uh, or if they wanted it at, up at the Carver Center, back at Gateway. And so what their plan is, and um, I mean, it hasn't been you know released, but the plan is to kind of rotate uh, sites for the Juneteenth celebration that, that they will host. Uh, so they're back over by Gateway Gardens in the Inventrek parking lot this Saturday uh, in the afternoon. Next year, I think that their plan is to go to Studebaker Park next to Carver Center, and then the year after that, down to Foster Park, and just kind of do that three location sure. yeah. rotation. Um, now, I think a couple of churches are doing uh, one up on Lock Street by uh, Second Missionary Baptist Church or Wayman Chapel. So there's a Juneteenth celebration up there as well. And so, you know, not that the city does not see the need in doing that. We wanted to support what these organizations already had in place and not do something that was going to compete, so to speak, and, and pull um, you know folks away in, in too many different directions so that the support were with these organizations. So I guess yeah. you could say the city's you know, um, sponsorship or, or su- direct support uh, is, will be the one over at Ventrec Park uh, with a Housing Authority and um, Carver Center. But, again, the, the church is up on the, the north side there at uh, Apperson and uh, Lock uh, will also be going on. Sure, yeah. No, that's good to hear. So, like I said, you talked about that a little bit on the top of the show. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this, too. I think there's, there's some people out there that really – they don't know what Juneteenth is. Uh, mm-hmm. They're unaware of the holiday and just the shortest history lesson of all time. But like, it is the day in our country's history, history where slavery, slavery was um, emancipated. So that's yes. why that is celebrated as the exact in Texas. day. Texas, Texas was the yeah, last state. Yeah, Texas was the last day, a state where um, slavery officially became fully illegal in the United mm-hmm. States. So that's the, the celebration of that day. So it's good to see that cities partnering with organizations that already have events in place and trying to, you know, find them a place to do yep. um, the celebrations that they're yep. doing. Show will be, will be out there. I think the DJ is going to be spinning some tunes. So it ought to be a good time out of Ventrec parking lot. Good to hear which is a big parking lot. So fit a lot of people there. And honestly, a lot of the questions we got to, um, you know, they involve, I don't know, specifics like stop signs or street lights, mm-hmm. speed bumps, playground mulching, you know, and I felt like instead of going through all of those specifically, I mean, the team, we felt like, can you just cover anything like that? Where do people yes. call? How do they get a hold of City Hall? When in so doubt, this doesn't just leave you know just yep. a negative comment on Facebook. Sure, like, how does it, things get I solved? Would, I would love to. I mean, and I know people are like, oh, you know, you got enough to do. You don't. No, I want people to call. So, when in doubt, if you don't know which department to do, call my office four five six seven four four four. 
Shoot me an email at mayor at cityofkokomo.org. If you're on Facebook, go to the city's uh, Facebook page and direct message me. Um, and I then forward that on to the specific departments or try to get an answer back right away, even if it's 1230 at night on a Saturday night. Um, because, again, you know, if folks have questions. So if it's in regards to a stop sign at an intersection, that goes through the traffic department. It would be something taken before the traffic commission, which is uh, appointments by city and uh, uh, mayor and city council and such. And so uh, it gets approved there and then taken to the uh, uh, board of works or city council. Um, you know, if it's something in regards to recycling or trash, refuse and maintenance department, if there's potholes, if there's curbing, if it's something, you know, sidewalks, either street or engineering department. But again, because there's so many and not knowing where to go, call me and I'll get you to the yeah, right you're direction. You're kind of like the 411 of City Hall. Yes. You bet. I like that. I love yeah, it. So there's, we had a lot of questions, like I said, about playground mulching, mm -hmm. a lot of parks mm -hmm. and rec stuff, uh, sidewalks, all of that type of very common topic of things the mayor probably hears a lot about. So, if you ever have, if you're ever in doubt, just give them a call up Please at City do. Hall. We'll maybe put the phone number down below so people can see that. Um, I know numbers are hard to hear and remember, so we'll have that on the screen. But yeah, that's that's it for Ask the Mayor. Um, keep them coming though. Keep the questions coming. I know we're uh, really excited to see all these questions. You guys asking these questions, it's a great thing. So keep those coming. Um, and wrap up the show like we always do with movies with the mayor. So this week, uh, you gave me a movie from 1993. Mm -hmm. It was a modern Western called Tombstone. Tombstone. What a cast. By the what way. a cast. And it was really interesting. I mean, I was four when this movie came out. So I <laughs> and laughed. I was graduating from college. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was funny to see online somebody call this a modern Western. It was from 1993. <laughs> um, but that's fine. You know, the cast was great, though. Val Kilmer was in it. Doc Tons. Holiday, yeah. yeah, which I think he was my favorite character. Mm -hmm. But the quick summary, you know, I think we're, we should be doing this be better, doing that better on this segment. Just kind of quick summarizing the movie. So basically, there's these guys, these old Western guys. They don't call themselves cowboys, but nope. I mean, in my definition, they're cowboys. Cowboys were the bad people in this movie, so you watch the term. Um, but they, they come to this town. They have retired from their bad ways. And they've come to this town named Tombstone, and they want to make a fresh start. They want to get in business. They don't want to be making money, you know, illegally or making things bad way. Um, but then there's some people in the town that don't like them, and then they're provoked. And yep, and it's time to clean up yeah. the old west. I tell you what, and I think I, t I said this last week. I grew up with westerns on a lot at my house. Mm -hmm. My dad loved watching oh, westerns, I did too. whether it was like a TV show or actual movie of it. Uh, my dad loved watching Westerns and uh, I never really got into them because that was like his old man thing to do. <laughs> and uh, that still is true. I'm going to be honest. Is it? This it's movie was very thing. slow. Half the time I'm like, all right, what's the plot? Like what's, <laughs> what's, I understand the hate, but like, what's the plot here? The acting was funny. Val Kilmer, I think he was my favorite character. He was just, he was the Your funny, he was the comic relief yeah. of the movie. Um, but I mean, it's classic Western. Yeah. There's shoot 'em ups. There's uh, some love stories going on. Everybody drinks way too much. Uh, there's some classic poker games taking place yeah. at a saloon that somehow someone always dies at the end of a poker game. So, I mean, it was a <laughs> modern uh -huh. Western but Bring, it's still bringing had. two legends together of the Wild West, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. Yeah. So, uh, so let me ask up. you this then. It's Those almost like characters. Avengers, the Avengers of the Wild West. Okay, I, mean, I didn't know in that. Their, in their own right. I didn't know, have that they, background. They weren't pals, but this so movie those kind characters of told that story. Or have been in other movies? Well, other movies, well, just in the Wild West legend. Okay. So. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was like this legend of these characters. Yeah. I mean, because at, at the same time, which Hollywood always seems to do, that they released two movies uh, along the same storylines. I think about the same time was um, the movie Wyatt, where okay. Kevin Costner played Wyatt Earp. Okay. So, but there wasn't. I mean, so kind of the same. Yeah. No, I mean, it was. It's. It's. I'm just learning. They're not my kind of movies. Okay. They're very slow. When they're exciting, they're really exciting. But every other scene, I feel like, is just super yeah. boring. That's why some of the more more modern. Westerns are a little more exciting. You've got, you know, the, the new... I'm a millennial. I new, need excitement at every scene. The, the remake of The Magnificent Seven with Denzel Washington yes. and Chris Pratt and yeah. that group. That's, I'm into I that. Mean, that's more... Um, 
Three Ten to Yuma. That's another remake yeah. that was really good. I mean, that's so, a train one, right? That's, yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah. So, so yeah, the too. the even more modern in the new millennia. It's a little bit more. You take it a little. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but I mean, for West what Coast. it was, it was great. I think, just not my style of movie. Got it. I'm, I'm learning that, and I think there is such a stigma too. Like it's my dad's movies. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know if I could get into it just because I know it's it's what my old man always watched, you know. So, I mean, maybe that's it. But the acting was really great. So, he's, again, tying in the fact that he was four when this came out and I was getting out of college. So, kind of the dad, okay, 100%, I get it. I'm, I get it. I'm an old yeah. man already. No, I get that. But, I mean, I don't know. If you're into it, it's it's available everywhere. I actually weirdly rented it on YouTube. Uh, you can rent it on iTunes. It's available there. Um, there's not a lot of movie stores these days. Every other weekend, I think, on TNT. Is it? Okay, yeah. It's a T- yeah, <laughs> or where you, TBS. Where you watch a movie on TV and it takes four times as long as <laughs> yeah. you just watch the movie. Um, but yeah, I found it online pretty darn easily. So, I mean, it is a classic movie, I guess. I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes and it's got like a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, it's critically acclaimed. Really great. I just learned it's not my style. No. Which is fine. I'm not going to like every movie. It's fine. But uh, so let's talk about what is the movie challenge this week? What am I going to watch? Uh, this week we're going, we talked about it a little before we went on. It's something that you've seen, but is a classic. We're going to stay with the year 1993. Cause it was is that, a good is year. it also 93? 1993, The Sandlot. It's baseball wow. season, but n- not so much baseball season as it is just summer. And I remember, you know, growing up having a vacant lot across the street that we played baseball or kickball on or wiffle ball in somebody else's backyard and just riding bikes all around town and yeah. you know and the the middle school crushes on the on the older girls and sure. you know and the the uh, uh, the peppercorns the, yeah the windy, pep, windy, windy, peppercorn. windy peppercorns yeah um the the overnights in clubhouses and stuff you know eating s'mores and yeah. something. so it's just it's just a good it's summer a movie yeah we watched that for the first time with my kids last summer and it's it holds up. We were talking about it a little bit, but like this, I haven't watched it. We'll talk more about it next week. Yeah. But like this movie will, in my opinion, will just always be good. Yep. It's one of those movies that will never go old. It'll always be a classic, and I'm excited to watch it again. I'll, I'll watch my ki- with my kids too. So Sandlot yep. is the movie for next week. Looking forward to that. It's and that's summer. True. It is Jack very Rabbits. family friendly. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Almost it's it's very I mean, middle school humor too. So. Yeah, it's it, but Erin, it, we were talking the other. She saw saw some meme. Um, it was, it, you were talking about running around doing all the things as a kid in the summer, and it made me think it's basically being a kid in the year twenty twenty one. Mom, I'm going over to so and so's house, and the mom says, "Great, call me or text me every ten minutes to make sure you're okay." You get there twenty twenty one. Being a parent in like the the sixties and fifties, hey mom, we're gonna go play in this abandoned rock quarry, and her response is great. Dinner's at five. Don't be late. And that's just the difference between <laughs> when, summer parents. When I yell your name, you better come. Yes, Other than that, yes. it's like, that, yeah. it, but like it, Sandlot definitely hits different as a parent mm-hmm. of you know a kid that could be close to that age. And they're just running around on their bikes all summer, all summer, going to some ballpark where there's this beast of an animal on the other side of the wall. <laughs> Parents have no idea where these children are. It's amazing. So, yeah, I'll watch Sandlot Fun next classic. week. Yep. And we'll talk about that. But, I mean, it's, it's going to be great. It's a great movie. Awesome. So the new tradition here on the Mayor Tyler Moore Show is we like to end it on a lighter note, which is a dad joke. So what dad Ooh. joke do you have prepared for uh, We'll stick with the bar theme. So a piece of string walks into the bar. Bartender says, hey, buddy, get out of here. We don't serve your kind. So he wanders out and tries to come back in. And, again, piece of string goes, hey, we don't serve strings in here. Get out of here. You, you don't, I already told you. And so he goes out. Comes back in a third time. Bart just said, listen, buddy, I'm done. We don't serve strings here. Get out. And so he goes out, kind of ties himself over and takes the end of it and makes, messes it up almost like a hair or something. And he goes back in and bartender says, hey, aren't you that string? And he goes, I'm afraid not. Ah! 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 Wah, 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 wah. There you go. There's All your right, weekly folks. dad joke from the Mayor Tyler Moore. And thank you for watching another episode here on the Kokomo Post of the Mayor Tyler Moore Show. As always, make sure to leave your questions for the mayor in the comments below of this video. Or if you're listening to this on a podcast format, don't worry. You can always just write in to our website, thekokomopost.com, or write into us on Facebook or Instagram, and we'll make sure your questions show up on the show. We had a lot of questions this week that didn't make it on this show, but trust me, we're going to bring those up next week. There were just so many of them. So we're going to try to you know get some of the questions from this week and make sure they show up next week as well but thank you for watching thanks all we'll see you next time
You going to finish your watermelon? No, nah, I'm good. 